Good morning and welcome to worship at Stonehouse Presbyterian Church and happy Easter to you all. Uh, you'll notice this morning we are in a slightly different space. Uh, I'm actually uh, doing it live from our sanctuary uh, where it's been wonderfully set up for us uh, for this Easter Sunday on this beautiful, beautiful Easter Sunday. Uh, this Easter is a lot different for so many of us, but I am so glad for this chance to get to worship with you all this day. Um, and uh, as we begin our, our worship service, I do want to just quickly mention a, a couple things. First is that you can find the full bulletin and follow along with us at the link uh, that's in this video. Or if you go to our website, go to shpchurch.org, uh, then click on worship. Then on the right hand side, you'll see bulletins. And if you click on uh, that, you'll see Easter worship as the top bulletin. Click on that and you can follow along with everything that we are doing. Um, the second thing is that a lot of our prayers um, uh, and liturgy for today come from two sources. The first is they come from the Stages on the Way, which is an Easter, Lenten Easter uh, liturgy uh, done by the Wild Goose Worship Group out of Iona. And then our prayers of the people and sending and blessing come from Jill Duffield at the Presbyterian Outlook. Well, as we are gathering together from all different places, uh, I invite us into our call to worship this morning. And our call to worship, uh, I will be uh, saying some phrases, and then when I lift my hands like this, I invite you to shout as loud as you can from wherever you are, hallelujah. So will you please join with me in our call to worship this morning? This is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never put it out. Hallelujah. This is the good news. Once we were no people, and now we are God's people. Hallelujah. Will you please join with me in our opening prayer for today? And in our opening prayer, every time I say, hallowed be your name, I invite you to echo back wherever you're coming from, hallowed be your name. And I'll try lifting my hands as well. Let us pray. Lord God, early in the morning when the world was young, you made life in all its beauty and terror. You gave birth to all that we know. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, when the world least expected it, a newborn child crying in a cradle announced that you had come among us and that you were one of us. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, surrounded by respectable liars, religious leaders, anxious statesmen, and silent friends, you accepted the penalty for doing good, for being God. You shouldered and suffered the cross. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, a voice in a guarded graveyard and footsteps in the dew proved that you had risen, that you had come back to those and for those who had forgotten denied and destroyed you. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, in the multicolored company of your church on earth and in heaven, we celebrate your creation, your life, your death, and your resurrection. So to you this morning we pray our prayer of confession and eternal hope knowing that we can draw ever closer to you because you drew forever closer to us. Will you please join me in our unison prayer of confession and then in a time of silent confession. Let us pray. Risen Savior, you broke the power of the grave. You broke the power of sin. You broke the power of death. As we celebrate your triumph, may we also follow you with our lives. Forgive us for all the ways we have missed 
the fullness of life. Resurrect in us joy and fellowship, service and justice, grace and love. May our spirits be filled always with the hope of abundant life. Let us now pray silently. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. The grave is empty and Christ is risen. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness will never put it out. In Christ's resurrection, we are forgiven and welcomed into the everlasting kingdom of God. Alleluia. Amen. I invite us now if you're able to join with me in a response to this good news of Easter Sunday and forgiveness and pardon and everlasting life. And it's a prayer originally written by Desmond Tutu that we practiced uh, a couple Sundays ago here in worship uh, with us called Goodness is Stronger Than Evil. And it's got some motions I'm gonna invite you to do along with me. So the first line is goodness is stronger than evil. And the line for goodness I want us to do is holding our hands like this, like we're sharing something. So goodness is stronger than evil. Love will give a big hug. Love is stronger than hate. Light will point up. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. And for life, this one, I really want you to go a little bit crazy and move your fists around, dance however you want. If you have children, they probably will lead the way in this. But go, life is stronger than death. Life is stronger than death. And then we'll go, victory is ours, a V with our fingers. Victory is ours. Victory is ours through God who loves us. Victory is ours. Victory is ours through God who loves us. So let's try doing all of that together right now. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours. Victory is ours through God who loves us. Victory is ours. Victory is ours through God who loves us us. Thank you so much for joining with me in that prayer and response. At this time, I want to grab something that's behind me that may look familiar to some of you. So for many of us, this item may be something we grew up with. I know for me, this was the first thing I remember when someone asked, what, what did you first give? What was your first offering? And it was fish boxes like this that my Presbyterian church growing up would send out to us at the beginning of Lent and then ask us to return on Easter Sunday or some, some Sunday after, filled with coins and dollar bills and everything else. And it was such a joy to bring it, but I never knew what this offering actually went to. So I wanna share with you what these fish boxes and what this offering goes to. So this fish box is for one great hour of sharing. One great hour of sharing is, uh, a big offering that not just the Presbyterian Church does, but lots and lots and lots of different churches do each season of Lent and Easter. For us, though, our offering of One Great Hour Sharing goes to such great work that the Presbyterian Church does in our nation and around our world. It goes to three key areas. The first is Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, which goes to help people after big storms or loss of homes, and even now is figuring out a way to respond to those who have been 
her, with uh, both illness and loss of jobs and communities that have been really hurt by the COVID-19 virus. Um, so Presbyterian Disaster Assistance has teams of volunteers, has boots on the ground, has people um, and resources ready to serve right away and is one of the greatest ministries of our denomination in church. The second is the Presbyterian Hunger Program, which serves food to those in need both locally and around the world. And the third is one that I think is one that's a really, really neat program, which is the self-development of people. It's for people who have dreams, who have ideas, but they need some resources to get them off the ground. Maybe they're building a well in their town. Maybe it's starting a new business where they are. Uh, maybe it's creating a, a local community garden. Whatever it is, uh, the self-development of people goes in and helps really support people in this work. Um, this goes to really serve our local and global world missions so well. And so this year, I'm gonna invite you, we're not able to take coins and money right now, so we're not able to send out the fish boxes, which I'm so sorry about, but we are able to collect this offering still. And the easiest way is, as you give your offering for today to Stonehouse Presbyterian Church, we invite you to give a, an extra offering to One Great Hour Sharing as well. Um, and we'll be sharing some videos throughout the week on our website here that you can follow along. But the easiest way is you can go to our website under shpchurch.org slash give, and then you'll see two different funds to give to. Our general fund, which we hope you give our Sunday offering to, is great. But then beneath that is one great hour of sharing, and you can give it just directly by clicking on that. You can also, if you do still send in checks, we are still taking checks and that's a great way to continue to give, is go, um, is, is send in checks and still write out to Stonehouse Presbyterian Church, but put in the memo line OGHS or one great hour of sharing. Um, thank you so much for all you do. There's some big bug that just flew by my head, but thank you so much for all that you do and give. Um, and I know, especially in this season, your offerings, your giving to our church, to One Great Hour Sharing, makes such a world of difference. And the link for giving is in this video beneath it. So thank you so much. And let's give a, let's give a, a prayer for our offering for this Sunday. Please join with me in prayer. Dear Lord, God, on this Easter Sunday, we're so grateful for all that you have given us the beauty of your, cre your creation, a community to share it in even as we're separate, this breath we get to breathe, this land we get to walk on, uh, and the good news of your son risen and saved. We pray this day that you may humbly accept our offerings back to you and that you may use them for the work of your kingdom to bring light and love and hope to all those who need it so much. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you so much. At this time, I want to read a story for us for our children's message. And the story comes from a book I've been using a lot uh, for our children's messages these Sundays called Growing in God's Love. It's the most recent uh, story Bible put out by uh, our denomination, uh, the Presbyterian Church, and it's wonderful. It actually has a lot more stories than most children's Bibles do. And so I invite you, even if you think I already have one, to definitely check this one out. Um, and it actually has like four different Easter Sunday morning stories. Um, but this is maybe my favorite, and it's called Mary Finds Her Friend. So I invite you, if you have any children or anyone who just really wants some story time, to come close to the screen right now and join with me in the story Mary Finds Her Friend. It's based on John 20, verses 11 through 18. What do you do when you miss someone? Do you remember how you played with the person? Do you like to go to places you went together? Let's listen of what Mary of Magdala did when she missed her really good friend who is named Jesus. Mary of Magdalene missed her friend Jesus after he died on Good Friday on that cross. She knew the tomb where his body was buried was empty, but she felt close to him there. So she stood outside the tomb and she cried. She thought someone had stolen his body that first Easter Sunday. When she, when she looked into the tomb, it wasn't empty. 
Two angels dressed all in white were there, and they said to Mary, why are you crying? And she said back to them, someone took away the good teacher, my friend Jesus, and I don't know where he is. When she turned around, she saw a man she thought was a gardener, because it was in a garden early in the morning. Woman, why are you so sad? The gardener asked. What are you doing here? Please tell me where Jesus' body is. Did you move him? Please tell me where. I will go and get him, Mary said. I want to see my friend. And the man said, Mary. And the way he said Mary, she knew only one person ever said her name that way. And it wasn't a gardener. It was her friend, Jesus. She cried out, teacher, you're alive. Mary was so excited to see Jesus alive, she wanted to hug him. But Jesus said, please don't touch me. Go tell my friends and followers that I am alive and I will soon go to be with God. Mary was so glad that Jesus was alive. She ran to find the other disciples so that she could tell them the good news of Easter Sunday. So thank you so much for joining with me in that story. And after that story, there's a song that we here love to sing with you all on Easter Sunday. And I'm definitely gonna need your help because I'm not the best singer. And it's called, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. And there's some motions to it. So wherever you are, I invite you to get up off that and stand and join with me in, in acting out and singing, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. So the song goes, Lord, I lift your name on high. And during that, I want you to wave your arms as much as you can. So it goes, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. So if you can do all those, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. And then we do, you came from heaven, so hands up to heaven, to earth, to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay from the cross to the grave, like we're burying, digging a grave, to, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. So let's try doing that all together. And I invite you to please sing at home because your voice I know will be so much better than mine. So let's sing out. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. And then it goes, you came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. All right, let's sing that one more time together. So it goes, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Well, thank you all for bearing with my terrible voice. I appreciate that this Easter Sunday. Grace does abound. And I wish so much I could hear you all too. I do want to say, um, if you do want to hear a much, much more gifted musical version, Nick Schacht on the YouTube page, which is linked below, has created five wonderful music songs uh, for this Easter Sunday. And one of them is Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. So I invite you after this worship service, if you can, to play that together and act it out and dance and sing. And uh, his, it's a really great version that you will not regret joining in with. Well, at this time, uh, I want to, to lead us in our first two scripture readings for today. Uh, the first one comes from Isaiah 25, verses 6 through 9. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. 
on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food with marrow of well-aged wine stained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now I invite us to go to the, our second scripture reading, which is the story of Easter Sunday told by Matthew, um, which he does maybe the quickest out of all the scriptures, uh, except for the shorter version of Mark. But we'll be listening to Matthew 28, verses 1 through 9. As two Marys go to the tomb at dawn on Easter Sunday. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him. This is my message for you. So the women left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to Jesus, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So about two, three weeks ago, I started to realize that Easter Sunday was going to look very different for us at Stonehouse Presbyterian Church and really for pretty much every church around this country and around our world. And in thinking that, I started to wonder what in the world could I offer for this Sunday? There'd be so much that we'd be missing that I absolutely love in meeting with you all. We wouldn't get the chance to get together at sunrise on the pond and share in communion. We wouldn't get the chance to come in with our best suits and hats and give each other hugs. We wouldn't get the chance to shout out as loud as we could to the song, Jesus Christ has risen today and put the flowers on our inside cross. Although you have put on beautiful, beautiful flowers at the outside cross this week. There was so much of our, of our routine and ritual for Easter Sunday we'd be missing in, our, in this year. And so I began wondering, what could I offer and say, as I know I was grieving and missing so much. And then about a week and a half ago, for some reason, the story of how the Grinch stole Christmas started coming to mind for me. Specifically, I was reminded of the ending of the story. Now, if you haven't read the book by Dr. Seuss or seen any version of the movie, the original, shorter version is still the best. I apologize, but spoilers are going to be ahead. Throughout the story of how the Grinch stole Christmas, as you probably remember, the Grinch hates Christmas. And he especially despises all the trappings that go along with it. It's so noisy and bright and loud and cheerful. And he's none of those things, partly because no one ever invites him into the celebration of Christmas, into their parties and joy and loudness. So on Christmas Eve, from high above in his isolated cave, he sneaks down to the town of Whoville, and it takes, and then he takes away everything that he thinks people care about for Christmas. 
He steals their presents. He steals their stockings. He steals their train sets and Christmas trees. He steals their lights and ornaments and tinsels and wreaths. He steals their instruments and crackers and things that make annoying and loud sounds. He steals all their expensive dinners of roast beast, whatever that meat is. I don't think we ever find out. And then he makes his poor dog, Max, with little antler ears on top of his head, carry all the items away from the town up to his lair on top of the mountain. And right as Christmas morning dawns, he expects to hear weeping below. He expects to hear wailing and crying and boo-hooing from all the townsfolk of Whoville. He thinks that by stealing all those trappings, all those things, all that stuff, he thinks he has canceled Christmas for all the people. He thinks there's nothing left to celebrate. But to the Grinch's incredible, astonished surprise, the people of Whoville, led by Cindy Lou Who, sing and celebrate and share and joy. Because Christmas was never about those trappings. Christmas was never about the lights and crackers and presents and roast beast. It was always about something more something far more wonderful and great and joyful, which no one and no power can ever, ever take away, which no one can ever fully steal from us. As I remembered that story, I thought for a second of writing my own for this season called How the Coronavirus Stole Easter. My wife, Hannah, even gave me some some ideas for this story. There could be a character in Williamsburgville named Alana Lama Banana. The coronavirus monster could come into everyone's home and instead of stealing Christmas trees and lights, could steal everyone's toilet paper and hand sanitizer. There could be a cat named Bagheera carrying the whole sleigh of stuff across the ferry to Surrey. And instead of roast beast, the coronavirus monster could steal all the Smithfield ham and crab cakes and peanuts. Maybe one day I will write that full story. I'm sure someone will beat me to it. But for this day, on this Easter morning, in this strange new season and time, all that I really want to say to all of you is this. The good news of Easter is still true. This weekend, we may not have our cakewalks and community Easter egg hunts. We may not have the big gatherings of family and friends we all planned or hoped for. We may not be able to come together in the sanctuary in our best suits and fanciest hats and hug one another and take pictures. We may not have Anthony leading us on washboard to all fly away and Bob and Karen killing it on piano and keyboard to 10,000 reasons. I will miss all of those things very much this year. And most of all, I miss sharing them with you all. But you know what is still true today? Christ is alive. The tomb is empty. Love is more powerful than fear and hate. And life is more powerful than death. On that first Easter Sunday, there were no great ham dinners or praise band or really eggs of any type. Instead, it was a group of women going to a humble tomb at dawn to prepare a friend for burial. On that first Sunday of Easter, there was a simple stone rolled away and a voice from inside saying, He is not here. There was a friend, a savior, a king of kings, meeting those he loved in their everyday clothes. And that friend, that king, that savior, He met people not in huge sanctuaries or at expensive feasts or in big gatherings of any sort. But instead, he met people in quiet gardens, on dusty roads, and inside locked, isolated rooms where they were scared. That first Easter Sunday, Jesus told the whole world without any grand show or fancy trappings of any sort, 
Sin is conquered. Death is overcome. Love and life and grace now and forever have the final say. God loves you and God wants to be with you forever. I think this year we are given an opportunity, an opportunity to reflect and consider what Easter truly means to us. So I want to invite you in a second to post here or talk with those who you are sharing Easter with your answer to this question. And that question is, what does Easter mean to you? What is the hope and good news Jesus is speaking to you today? Because nothing can take that away. I invite you to post that and share now. For some, the good news of Easter is that you will be reunited one day again with a loved one. For others, the good news of Easter is that whatever you have done and mistakes you've made, God will never give up on you. For still others, it is that love, especially radical sacrificial love, especially that love the world thinks is foolish and silly, that that love is always worth it. That love will always be the most valuable thing we can ever do or have. That love will have the final say. For me on Easter, the good news I hear today is that in raising Christ from the dead, our God is truly a God of love and grace. The one who created the universe, the one who breathed us out of dust, the one who spoke to prophets and gave us commandments, the one who called a people to follow after. That God is truly like Jesus. That God we will meet face to face is not a God who is ambivalent towards us or despises us, but is instead a God who loves us so much that even while we are a ways away, God will be just like that father and the prodigal son running up to us, wrapping arms around us. So now I'd like to hear and share what some of you all, the message you hear on Easter Sunday. So Kathleen shares rebirth and a fresh start. Anthony shares the death of death. Dan shares renewed life and hope for the future. Barbara shares love overcomes all. Iris shares, God makes all things new. Renee shares, um, Renee shares all of those things and more. Jimmy just shouts out hallelujah, that is such good news, maybe we can't even put it into words. Karen shares, love wins. And so does Genevieve, each and every time. Pat shares, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Well, I invite you to please keep posting and sharing as these are incredibly encouraging to us. And I think us having the chance to reflect what the good news of Easter is, is something worth sharing and lifting up and reflecting on this Easter Sunday. Our world is different right now. These are strange and scary and difficult days, but there is and always will be love. There is still the good news of the stone rolled away and the empty tomb. There is still faith and community, joy and celebration. There is still a God who loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son so that we would not be destroyed, but no life, life abundant and life eternal. And that God will always be here within us, beside us, and on the side of love and grace. As the Apostle Paul wrote, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword separate us from Christ's love? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. I invite us now into a time of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, your promises are sure, your love unrelenting, your power unmatched. We bow before you this day, humbled by your grace, awed by your mercy, rejoicing in your kindness. You suffered and died to forgive us. You became incarnate to show us God's love for us. You healed and fed, taught and preached, prayed and ate with sinners to show us God's will for us. You went to the tomb and were raised from the dead to defeat evil and bring life eternal for the sake of the world. You call us by name, Lord of all. Hearing our weeping, you refuse to leave us alone in our grief. Trusting your compassion, we share our deepest hopes and our greatest fears. At this time, I invite us to pause for a second and lift up those we would like to be prayed for. You can either speak them out loud or silently in your hearts. You can also post them here so that we can see them together and pray for them today and then the days to come. Lift up your joys, your concerns, your hopes, your fears this day, and know that the God of, of salvation, the God of resurrection, hears them and knows them and is responding to them in mercy and grace. Lord, we lift up to your light those crying in the night. We give thanks for those who have fallen ill and then recovered. Comfort the many who mourn, families unable to hold funerals, doctors and nurses confronted constantly with death, people longing to touch those isolated by this pandemic. Lord, we remember your call to care for the least of these and ask that you would give us the wisdom to serve in ways that show your love for all people. When we cannot physically be present, send your spirit as we send our notes. Make our calls and do all we can to visit those in prison, house those without shelter, and heal the sick. Help us to feed those who hunger physically, spiritually, or emotionally. May your body, the church, be united in our caring, radical, and our generosity, and stalwart in our advocacy. Grant us courage for the living of these days. On this day of resurrection filled with fear and joy, we worship, we sing, we weep, we give thanks, and most of all, we marvel at all your unwillingness to leave us to the consequences of our actions. Your tenacious desire to be in relationship with us and your amazing grace through which you have saved us. We make our prayer in the name of the one who is to say when we pray, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And before leaving today, I invite you, if you are able, to join with me in our final sending and blessing. And it's written in the bulletin, but each time I, I post up my hands, I invite you to shout out as loud as you can, 
He is risen indeed. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The tomb stands empty. He is risen indeed. Go and tell the good news. He is risen indeed. Friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. God bless, go in peace, and may you share the good news that Christ is alive and love wins. Thank you so much for me this Easter Sunday.